Thank you very much for coming. <clears throat> My name is Rob Watts. I'm the uh, dis digital design consultant for the court. Um, I'm, I'm here to talk about the technology and some of the design decisions that's gone into Hugo 2, our new uh, replacement to the best selling Hugo uh, DAC amp, and the Blue 2 um, CD player transformer. So we're going to talk first about Hugo 2. Let me test it. Uh, is Rob Watts, is Hugo the, that was a court, the Soshi Suwei Gongchenshi. Now, he has a lot of different designs. 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 He 两个更高级的产品 一个叫Ugo2 另外有一个是那个叫做Blue Mark II 的一个转盘 他用的技术都更先进他要慢慢地对他们解释 firstly um, We're very famously known for the WTA filter um, And this is a key element within all of my DACs. Um, with the Hugo 2, we've got a 49,000 tap length WTA filter, and it's a 16FS filter, whereas before we were an 8FS filter. Uh,我们看了今天这个主要的改进点, 因为扩的所有的数位器材里面现在都有内建一种叫做WTA的滤波器 一个功能，就是说它可以工作的范围更宽广，啊，更宽广，延伸到更宽广，速度也更快，所以它就是四九一五二个tap，啊，那么是在超取样是十六倍的超取样，WTA的标准内建在这个里面。So this is around a thousand times more processing power for the filter to reconstruct the timing information. So you get much better sound quality. And I use 45 208 megahertz DSP cores inside the FPGA to do this tap length. Okay. Okay.他说实际上这个小的，这个Ugo2里面的数位电路，它的时间的精准度，这精确性跟一般的器材比起来，哦，比较一般的器材比起来，精准一千倍以上，啊，精准一千倍以上。那么它里面有一个四十五核心的一个两百零八兆赫兹的一个呃数位的处理电路在里面，去让这个WTA的滤波器能够工作在非常快速、range非常宽广的一个状态。Okay. One of the big benefits that Dave has got our reference DAC is a WTA2 filter. It's the next filter after the first one, and this improves the timing resolution to an accuracy of 88 nanoseconds, rather than the 1.6 microseconds that the first filter does. And that makes the ability to hear the starting and stopping of notes much more accurately. Okay. So, the那个里面它有两级的WTA 
What I've done with uh, Hugo 2 is there's a filter option switch. And what this allows you to do is that if you've got very bright headphones that are too bright, or you've got a recording that's too bright, you can change the filter characteristics to make it sound softer and warmer. So it, it gives you the ability to fine tune the sound to, to suit. So the white setting, setting is the most incisive and the most accurate sound quality. Then we've got, um, and that uses the 256 FS WTA filter, so it's nice and sharp and clear. Then we've got the 256 FS filter followed by the high frequency filter, which makes it sound a little bit warmer.同时也影响到它音乐资讯的出现和结束的那一瞬间那出现跟结束的那一瞬间的快慢会影响到我们的听感那么实际上因为我们可能会搭配到的耳机的种类很多所以有的时候耳机的速度本身是很快的时候你的
um, core DAX from every other DAC on the planet? Uh, in core DAX, all the DAX in it, they are very focused on a characteristic, which is the sound quality. Ah, the sound quality. That is to say, even if the DAX is completely the same as the DAX, but when you are in the work state, the sound quality of the DAX is high. 就直接会影响到听声音的好坏，所以他们经过这样的研究之后，他们发现，在数位电路里面有很多各式各样不同的噪讯，他们就一一要对应这些噪讯来做对策，要把它降到最低。So noise floor modulation is when you have a very tiny signal, you measure it, you'll get the noise floor appearing at a particular level, and then when that signal gets bigger. With normal DACs or all other DACs, the noise floor pumps up and down. So as the signal gets larger, the noise floor pumps up and down. And that's a white, hard noise which pumps up and down, and it makes the sound sound grainy and brighter and artificial. Uh, 一般的机器，当你的讯号声音变大的时候，它噪讯也跟着变大。但是音乐的声音是忽大忽小，不断在变动的，所以你的噪讯也跟着它忽大忽小在变动。在这种情况之下，它声音听起来，第一个就会有人工加工加料的感觉，第二个，它声音会变硬。反正有这样的一个现象的时候，你听起来的感觉就是不够甜美，不够愉快，就会这个样子。If you can get rid of noise floor modulation in a DAC, things will sound very rich, smooth, warm, and natural. But it is incredibly difficult to eliminate all forms of noise floor modulation, um, which is why cold DACs are so different to other DACs. We can use all kinds of ways to reduce the noise floor modulation. 那降低噪讯有很多种不同的技术，啊，那可能呃每每家都不一样，啊，那他们用的是复合的技术来把这个噪讯加到最低的。So this is gives you a brief idea to some of the problems that can happen within DAX to create noise floor modulation. So we've got the actual DAC itself, the architecture of the DAC. Can make a big difference to noise floor modulation, and pulse array, my DAC technology innately has low or zero noise floor modulation. Uh, in Core's DAC, there is a special technique called pulse array DAC. The pulse array, this pulse array, this noun is only in Core's DAC. This technique, who invented it? He invented it. 啊、uh, ，key event， 他发明的啊，这个叫 pulse array， 这种技术可以很有效的啊，让噪讯压到非常非常的低，让它的噪讯所，因为噪讯的调变对讯号的调变所受到的影响，可以压到最低最低。OK。The other things that can make big differences to noise floor modulation is the reference supply, RF noise, and jitter. Um, and the architecture, all those three things add up to create a big problem. 那么这种噪讯的来源有很多种啊，其中一种是来自电源，电源本身会产生噪讯；还有一种来自 RF noise， 就是无线电的干扰，就高频的干扰啊，也会，它也是一种噪讯的形态。还有一种就是 jitter， jitter 是时脉误差，啊，时脉误差。它也是会产生一种噪讯，所以基本上一个数位电路它产生噪讯的机会是非常多的，有各式各样的噪讯在里面。Okay. Because my DACs are discrete DACs, there's no chips inside, and it's FPGA based, I can eliminate all of these sources of noise floor modulation. Okay. 因为它的 DAC 是不是用传统的外面买得到的那种 DAC 做出来的？它的 DAC 的工作是在一颗 FPGA 的一个这个叫做可程式逻辑夹这样的一个电路里面，是他们自己写的一个程式
跟他的演算方法，所以他可以一次可以把上面各种各样的造句把它压抑到最低的程度，那是他们独家的技术。DSD. DSD is a very important source. The problem with DSD is it's got a huge amount of out-of-band noise or RF noise. So this noise has to be filtered out in order to improve the sound quality. 那么现在很流行 DSD 这种格式的音乐档案。他说，其实这种音乐档案呢，其实会产生很宽频、很多的噪讯。因为它的频率非常的高，它比一般的那个数位档案的频率高很多，所以呢，实际上我们要解决 DSD 的这个噪讯，我们还要有特别的对策。Okay? So the filter that I've designed, a brand new filter for for Hugo 2, this has got over 200 dBs worth of attenuation at 88.2 kilohertz for DSD 64. No one has ever managed to do a filter. That is as, as effective as this. Okay. 那么实际上我们了解，我们呃大家都卖过 DSD 相容的音乐播放器和相关的器材。我们有 DSD 六十四，这是基本的。然后 DSD 一二八就两倍的，还有呃四倍的，就是二五六。哦，它这个可以相容到八倍的 DSD 五一二。那实际上 DSD 的倍数越高。其实也代表它有可能产生更多的噪讯。那他们现在所发展出来的技术，可以把噪讯压得非常非常非常的低，非常低低到什么程度呢？他说，他可以压到负两百 dB 这么低。哦，那我昨天来讲解的时候，我对他这个数字感到非常的怀疑，然后，那么后来他是跟我讲，他说这个是不是在类比领域的负两百 dB？ 是在数位领域的负两百 dB， 那这样他这样讲法是 OK 的，因为类比领域没有任何一台仪器可以量到负两百 dB， 到目前没有这个仪器。OK。What this does is it makes DSD sources sound very smooth and rich and refined。所以它能够把 DSD 的 noise 压到这么低的时候，是代表同样是 DSD 的档案，用别人的机器听就。感觉上没有那么干净，没有那么样的透明，它可能很细致，可是它没有那么样的穿透感。可是它压把噪讯压到这么低的时候，它用它的机器来听 DSD， 那电器声音非常干净，非常的透明，因为它的噪讯压的特别的低。OK。So the noise shaper, this is the part that it's the heart of all Delta Sigma DAX and DSD DAX. And it's crucial for performance and sound quality. 那么，其实，当你的噪讯能够压到很低的时候，哦，基本上它对整体听感的品质就会提升，音场的深度，你的听感的深度感方面就会感到特别的好。What I've done with Hugo 2 is to improve the pulse array DAC. Before I used to use four elements. Now I'm using ten elements, and that gives you better resolution. 那么现在 Hugo 2 w 它用了十个 Pulse Array 的一个处理单元在里面，但是以前 Hugo 就是以前旧的那台，那么它只有用四个 Four, right? Four. 四个，这个这个这个这个这个 Pulse Array 的处理单元，所以 Hugo 2基本上它的处理过程更理想。And I've improved the noise shaper. It's now an 11th order noise shaper. Again, this is using Dave technology going into Hugo 2. And this gives me a thousand times more resolution than I had with Hugo 1. Against reference standard high end DAX, that's a million times more resolution. And what this does to the sound quality is enables you to perceive depth much more easily and much, much more, you know, much better. Okay. 呃，这个是牵涉到一些技术上的说明啊。这个我简单讲就好了，就是说，它的它的这个 noise s h a p e 比以前更进步，比以前更进步，就是效能更好。它到那个第十一阶的这个滤波器的时候，它。
它已经是已经它的处理的频率已经高达一百零四个 MHz 这么高的频率，然后它这个这个这个、这个什么东西啊，已经到两百六十 dB 了啊，已经到两百六十 dB 的这个这个这个这个品质。事实上，他说这个都不重要，重要的是跟前一个 U 股比起来啊，它这个时间的 resolution 比以前那个比起来，这个新的是一千倍。啊，一千倍高的 resolution， 当然这个是这是数学上的一个意义的啊，数学上的意义。OK。Headphone， 嗯、um, ，pretty important for a headphone product、um,。We've got discrete output stage as we've had with with Mojo and with Hugo One， but we've also got a second order analog noise shaper、um, output， and what this means is that when you plug in a difficult to drive headphone。Normally, the distortion increases. With this circuit, the distortion only increases by a tiny amount.、Um, it only doubles. Okay. 那么它在那个类比输出的这个电路上面啊，那么基本上它就是说，它加入了另外一个滤波器啊，这另外一个滤波器。那这滤波器做什么用的呢？因为我们的耳机啊，有些是阻抗比较低的，有些阻抗比较高的，有些好驱动，有些不好驱动。他说，有些不好驱动的扩那个耳机啊，当你插到一个耳廓的时候，它为什么会不好驱动？你听起来声音不好听，就是因为，就是因为它这个耳机本身的阻抗特性会影响到输出级的放大特性，所以声音变得不好听。所以它这个。Ugo Two， 它里面的输出电路上，它有一个特殊的，一个 second order 的一个一个一个滤波器。它简单的讲，它可以防止这个不好搞的耳机的阻抗特性会影响到它放大器的驱动特性。所以，即使是不太好搞的耳机，插在它的这个耳廓上面，听起来也会变得比较好。What I've also done is improved the output power, the output current as as well. So this means that when you have difficult to drive headphones, when you plug them in, the sound doesn't change. It doesn't harden up. It sounds the same with easy headphones. So he, 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 不会说你这个难搞的耳机一插上去，哇，声音就变得，不会这个样。And I've got the same crossfeed function that we had in the original Hugo One. In fact, the crossfeed function is the only part of the circuitry, and the code that has not changed. 呃，我刚讲它有个 crossfeed 的功能，就是说把音场前倾的功能。这音场前倾的功能 ，Hugo Two 上面跟 Hugo One 是一样的。他说这也是 Hugo Two 上面唯一没有改变的部分，其他全部都改进。Measurements. Um, we're getting 126 dB dynamic range.、Um, the noise output is half the level that we had before with Hugo. It's 2.6 microvolts. Distortion is 407 percent, which is extraordinarily low distortion levels.、Um, there's only one DAC on the planet that beats this performance. And that's called Dave Dack.、Um, OK， 这是它的一些规格特性啊、哦，就是说它的动态可以到一百二十六 dB， 然后它残余的噪讯可以低到二点六个 microvolt， 就是百万分之二点六伏特这么低，它残留的噪讯啊，它的失真是零点零零零零七啊，就是说这个已经低到几乎一般的仪器都测不出来了啊、哦。那么它在输出功率方面，那么它有一些这样，这这 output power 是 how much more than the it's about a twenty five percent more than the, okay, the first.、Okay. So this is now over a watt.、Um, okay. The Hugo One was seven hundred and fifty milliwatts. Okay, okay, okay. 啊、uh, ，基本上这个这个它的输出功率大约比原来的 Hugo 多了百分之二十五左右啊，输出功率稍微大了一点点。And the output impedance is even lower. It's now only 25 milliamps. 那么输出的阻抗大概是原来的三分之 one third, right? 
original. Yes, it's one third. Okay. That's right. Okay. Yes. 它的输出主放, 只有原来可能是0.0757，它现在变成0.025。我们知道扩大机的内阻越低，对喇叭跟单体的控制能力就是越好。所以实际上它输出好像较降低的时候，代表它对耳机单体的驱动能力、控制力更好。OK。So okay. here is a measurement using APX555 of the distortion output, and this shows the lack of noise floor modulation on the output. Here we have with the blue trace, two and a half volts into 300 ohms, and you've got a second harmonic at minus 130 dB, and on all the high frequency components are below minus 150 dB. So that's extraordinary low levels of distortion. This is a test 那假如说他你给他一个一颗赫兹的讯号赢过其他的高斯的鞋摸的时候基本上它的音色是属于比较好听的还有一个就是说我们看它的最最你的最你的 那这个东西就测起来就是说它的机器的时针非常非常非常的你基本上平均说起来它所有的high-order harmonic exposure 低于负一百五十几米我告诉你这个时针远低于很多桌上型的大型系统连大型系统的时针都没有办法做的 The other thing that is interesting is the noise floor is extremely low at minus 177 dB most DACs, a high-end DAC would be about minus 160 to be state-of-the-art, and typically they're minus 150 dB. So we've got an extremely low level of noise. So this red part is the basic light source. It can be up to 177 dB. He said that in general, we have a very expensive DAC. Up to 160 is already very expensive. Most DACs, 只有高于负一百五，所以他说我这么小的机器能做到负一百七啊，已经比很多大型的系统失真都还要低。And the red trace is with no signal, the blue trace is with full signal, but the noise in both cases are absolutely identical. So there is zero measurable noise form modulation with you go to。那么他就说，他电路的基本噪音跟量测出来的。那个那个讯号的那个噪音的底部几乎是完全一致，就是说代表它这个电路的品质跟失真，还有它的电源等等这些的这些的那些这些周边的设计，就已经达到非常非常完美的境界，就达到那个零件的极限，已经到这个程度
那么他的他的这个失真，比起前一个机种只有十分之一。如果我们只针对他的数位造句来做量测的话，是原来的百分之一。We've got double the WTA chat length with over a thousand times more processing power than a regular high-end DAC, and it's now WTA filtering to 88 nanoseconds. This means that the timing of transients is much more accurately reconstructed, and the, the ability to hear transients, pitch, bass, instrument separation, all of these things gets much, much better. Um, we've got half, over half the output impedance and more power output, and the noise shapers themselves have got a, a thousand times more resolution than within original Hugo one. 那基本上，它的输出阻抗更低啊，它输出功率更高。那么还有就是说，在时间的 resolution 上面，它甚至于是原来的一千倍。We focus this in terms of transportable operation. So for portable, you use Mojo. So when you want to put it in your pocket, you use a Mojo. If you want to use it on a plane, or in your hotel room, or in your office, you'd naturally go for Hugo two. So it's a sharper design. It's easier with the, the, the buttons and the feedback from the, from the light display. We've got a remote control, so when you plug it into a regular hi-fi, you can use it as a regular DAC. It's a it comes with a remote control. So this thing is quite small. So it brings more convenience. You can take it when you go to a hotel room. You can use it as a We've got the um, option of adjusting the sound quality to suit particular headphones, particular recordings, or particular customers' tastes. Because all customers, some like a very bright sound, some like a very rich and dark sound. So this allows people to fine-tune things to, to suit, suit what they want. Thank you very much for, for reading this. Oh, thank you.